Lord. We greet everyone the peace of the Lord Jesus. Those who can, I'd like to invite you to stand up at this moment in reverence to the reading of the word that will be read, the word of the Lord. First Kings, Old Testament, chapter 17. Kings 17. Verse 16. 17, 16 says the following. From the jar of flour was not used up, and the jug of oil did not run dry. In keeping with the word of the Lord spoken by Elijah, Lord, we praise you, give you honors, and we glorify your holy name because of the fellowship that we have with you. We plead, Lord, that once again we manifest in our midst your grace, your love, your favor, your mercy. We pray with the holy name of Jesus. Amen. The church may sit down. We just read a verse here that speaks, that tells the story of a woman who was a widow and had two children. This woman inhabited in a house, in a city called Sarepta. And in that place where she uh, lived, there is there there was a season where it didn't run, didn't rain in that season, and the drought, because of the absence of raining, was is really great, and it caused to that region, to that city, especially especially to that woman, to that lady consequences and the consequence was that the food was scarce and the food was every day diminishing and the moment in which she was leaving it uh, we could say and the reward registers this it was what she had was only enough for another meal she was going to eat with her children and after that she was going to die of hunger she was leaving a moment of affliction and depression and anguish and sadness she was lacking uh, hope at that time because of the situation that she was in the word of the Lord says that the name of the city, city Sarabi, the meaning of this, the name of the city, it means place of uh, forging or furnace. So when you imagine a place of uh, forger, forging place or furnace, we imagine one thing. We imagine that this place is very hot. So it was a moment of great anguish, a great sadness, of great pain and suffering because the provision the food to sustain, to sustain her and her family was coming to an end there was no longer hope for that woman but our God the God of Elijah is a God of mercy and when the Lord refers to a widow, he says the following. I'm the judge of widows. So then the Lord, at that day, he decided to judge the cause of that widow and the cause of that woman. 
that was there alone. And she had necessities inside of her home that were real. She had the concerns with her family. And she was had no way for her, for her to um, answer to those needs. And the word of the Lord says that then the Lord gives an order. All the way from eternity, God determines a blessing upon the life of that woman. So can think one thing, my brethren, the eyes of God were, were turned to that life, to that woman. She could have felt uh, alone and unprotected, but in no moment God left her alone. In no moment God let her down. And the word says that then gives an order to the prophet Elijah. And the prophet Elijah is the one who went and was taken to heaven. There is no um, um, record of the death of Elijah because he went for from his life to eternity. And the signs that Elijah operated, they were similar or we can say their prophecies regarding the one who also went up to heaven, the one who died <laughs> but resurrected and is alive at, at the right hand side of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord. And the Lord says uh, now, speaks now with the prophet and says the following, Get up. The Lord said, Take a position, Elijah. Get up, Elijah. I have a work for you to do. I have uh, a, a, tax, a task for you to do. And the word of the Lord says that Elijah got up. God sent the resource to that woman. Get up and go to Sarepta. Sarepta. The Lord even gave him the address. And amongst all the tribes of Israel, in every city of Israel, the Lord said, No, go to the place of the forge. You go to the place of the furnace. Because the fire of affliction will be replaced by the fire of my Holy Spirit. Blessed be the name of the Lord. The anguish and sadness will pass. The joy, the comfort, and the relief will be in the house of that woman. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Elijah knew fire. Elijah was the one who uh, built the altar and put the wood and put the lamp there and chew water. And they prayed to the Lord and fire came down from heaven. And fire came down from heaven. The people said, only the, the Lord is God. So that was a demonstration that God was the Lord, was the Lord of that woman, was the Lord of the house, was the Lord of that people. Our Lord, the one to, who with, whom answers with fire. So when the friends of Daniel was on the furnace of uh, burning fire, they were not alone. Because in the midst of the fire, there was a fourth man. Was there the son of God that at that moment in which they were leaving and here is not different there was a pain and affliction and anguish it was great fire lots of uh, difficulties and the Lord said go there to the house of that woman the Lord scheduled a meeting that day with that woman and sometimes we think that we are not special to God but here it shows how special that woman was for God. Out of more than one million people that inhabited that region, more than 500,000 women, uh, we could say, God chose a woman so that in that day, the prophet would inhabit and dwell in her house. We'll, we'll, we'll come to him, make dwelling on him. Blessed be the name of the Lord. And the word says, my brethren, that he get, gets up and he goes and gets at the gate of the city. And every time that we see in the word of the Lord, the gate, 
You know what that means. Who is the door? Jesus, I am the door. He says, I am the door. Jesus is the door that leads to the city, the holy city, the new Jerusalem, new heaven, new earth. The word says that God will dry up uh, all the tears from your eyes. And the prophet was there at the gate of the city to dry up every tears from the eyes of that woman. Blessed be the name of the Lord. To remove any pain, any anguish, any suffering, and every affliction. The word says, my brethren, that when he got to the door, the gate of the city, he met with that woman that God told him to meet with that day. And he began to have a conversation with that woman. And it is interesting that at the moment in which he arrives, he met that woman very discouraged. And at the gate of the city, she was gathering wood. And sometimes man goes to the gate of the city. He presents before the gate, the door, who is our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. But he doesn't, is not able to look at the door or to look what is beyond the door. He turns out his eyes in order to pick up wood. There was no hope. I'm at, at the gates of the city. I'm going to just, I came here just to pick up a, a bunch of uh, wood. I'm going to make a fire. I'm going to cook uh, food. I'm going to eat. And then it will be over for me. It will be uh, the glory of God will be over. There's no more solution. So she was discouraged. We can say that she was already um, at ease with that situation, but we should not accept the situation. Don't take the shape of this world, but be transformed by the renovation of your spirit. Blessed be the name of the Lord. The Lord didn't have for her a, a bunch of wood. The Lord didn't have for her just another day of life. The Lord didn't have for her just another person to sustain her just for one less day. You know why? Because the desire of the Lord is to be with us every day. And the word says, my brethren, that she was gathering wood. The prophet came and called her. And he says, bring me a little bit of water. Look, it was not raining. The, the land was dry. There was no production on the field. And the water was probably scarce. But the word says, my brethren, that when she was going to get get water. And it, what is interesting about water is that the water, the purpose of the water is for two things, to quench the thirst and also to clean. You, you bathe to clean up and you drink to quench your thirst, which is a light, right? We drink water now and in a few minutes, or a few hours, we'll be thirsty again. That's what Jesus says. When you drink of this water, you continue thirsty. But I have a water that will make into you a fountain that will flow to eternal life. He said, I am the water of life. So then the Lord sends the prophet and he asked her to pick up water for her, for him. And the word says that when she went out to get water, so then we understand one thing, that she had water at the moment of scarcity of affliction, of furnace, she had water. And I just said that Jesus is the water of life. She had Jesus. And my brother, when we have Jesus, we have all things. When we have, Je when we have the kingdom, the Lord adds on to us everything else. So she had water. And the Jesus says, if someone gives a glass of fresh water, to one of my servants called prophets. In no way I will take their name out of the book of life. It's written like that. That's what Jesus says. And that woman had 
What are to give to the prophet of God, to the servant of God? And the Bible says that when she went out, went out to pick up water, then he said, I want something else. I want a piece of bread. I want bread. So he asked her, water and bread. I want to drink. And I also want to be fed. I want to eat. So then we can think, this man went there to help. <laughs> now he's going to eat everything that she has, whatever she has left. And he's going to drink the rest of the water she has. And she's going to eat the bread that she had. And I, I don't, I'm not understanding this. But sometimes the Lord operates in mysterious ways. God operates according to faith. If you believe, you see the glory of God. Believe in Jesus, you'll be saved. You in your house, your household. Everything goes through faith. So she had water and she had the elements to make bread. So in her house, even if it was just a little, she had their, their uh, reserve. Sometimes you just need a little bit of faith, a little bit of bread, just a little bit of water, a little bit of oil. She had water, she had bread, she had oil. She had the Father, she had the Son, she had the Holy Spirit. So she had God present in her home, in her household. What she didn't have at that moment was hope that God could act on her life, on, our, on her behalf, and our, on her benefit because of the period of trial that she was going through because of the scarcity in her house. Yeah. But the Lord allowed uh, to wait until that moment in order to act, in order to operate on the benefit of that woman. And then he asks those things. Ask it, he asks for bread and water and he says, and she says, Lord, I just have a little bit of uh, flour and a little bit of oil and water. I just picked up here two pieces of wood and I'm going to prepare uh, our last meal to me, to my children, so that we can eat and die. And there is a message, a passage in the Bible says, God has no pleasure in, in the death of those who He loves, whom He loves. And it, it also says that God loved the world in such a way that He sent Jesus so that whoever believes in Him is not perished, does not die, but, have, but has eternal life. You know why? Because dead cannot praise the Lord. A dead person cannot praise the Lord. God is not interested in that woman and her children to die. God is, is, no, is not interested in the idea that we would die. God's intention that we all live. Jesus came so that we have life and that you have life in abundance. So the love of God and manifestation of God is so that man does not die, but so that man has, may have life and live eternally. Blessed be the name of the Lord. So then the Lord, through the prophet, He speaks with that woman. And the word of the Lord says the following, my brethren, that she did according to what the word has told her. And now we can see another thing here. What is necessary for us to receive the blessing of the Lord in order for the miracle to reach my house? You basically have to do two things. Two things. We can summarize the whole Bible into two words, two things. You know which one is the first? I already said, believe, faith. And the second is to obey. And that woman, first, she believed in the word of the prophet and then she obeyed. 
without faith and, and without obedience, sometimes the plan of God is not fulfilled in our lives. Sometimes the adversities may cause us to deviate, deviate from the plan and the project of God for our lives. Sometimes we go through moments of affliction and suffering. We only look downwards and you just want to pick up pieces of wood. Uh, it means that res human resources. But there, there was the prophet. There was the representative of God. God was present in that moment. And God was having a conversation with that woman. And the prophet was went, didn't go there to go to the house of this woman to eat and drink and just leave. No. Sometimes we think that. We think that God's going, going to spend a little while with us. He's going to give a little blessing. And that's not what it is. God went there to inhabit he went there to uh, dwell in the house of this woman. He went there to be a helper of the woman. Jesus sent the prophet to be in the house of this woman all of all those days. And the word, my bread, says that throughout the period in which the prophet was in the house of that woman, the flower didn't run out. So, the word of God was fulfilled faithfully every day in the house of that woman. Every day in the house of that woman. The oil of the pot didn't run out. So it was a pr constant presence of the Holy Spirit of God there. In my brethren, when the word of the Lord and the Holy Spirit of God is they are present in mine, in yours, in our lives, we don't lack anything. And because of, in those days, the word says that they didn't lack anything. And sometimes, we many times we use the example of the Psalm 23, the Lord's my shepherd, I shall not want. That woman had the Lord, her shepherd, her guide, her helper, the one who came to supply to all our necessities. That woman was a servant of God. And the Bible says that I've never seen a just being let down and their descendants beg for bread. God didn't let down that woman. He didn't let down her descendants, her children. They were present in the house to supply to everyone her necessities. And that's what the Lord is doing today for a woman special tonight. This meeting was scheduled by God with this woman. And the Holy Spirit is present in this place. And this heart who is, is like a furnace filled with affliction and anguish and suffering. And at this moment, He is presenting Himself at the gate of the city to you. To tell you, my sister, that you are not alone. That God is giving you the support. God is blessing you. He's supplying to all your needs because you are a servant of God. From the pan, the, the flowers never run out. And from the pot, the oil never run out according to the word of the Lord. The word of the Lord has power. The word of the Lord is, has an, is an authority on heaven and on earth. All things were made by the word of the Lord. All things. The world, everything, all, all things were made through the word of the Lord. So it is the power of the word of God, of the grace of God, of the mercy of God, uh, was able to reach that woman, showing to her that he is inhabiting, he is living in her house, and she will no, no longer lack anything. She was already without hope, without a purpose in her life, without perspective. Sometimes we are like that, without hope, without hope for our life, without 
without a direction, without a target. Sometimes, and, and at this moment, my brethren, when we are going through this, only the Lord, only the Lord can come and put everything in order in our lives and to show that we are not alone. The Lord got up that day because it was an order. The Lord gave an order, get up and go to meet with that woman. And tonight the Lord, through His spiritual gift, gave an order so that tonight there, w there will be a meeting between this woman and God and to show her that God is in control of all things. Blessed be the name of the Lord. There was a woman walking on the beach. She was looking towards the ground and she began to gather um, seashells, but she was very depressed. Then an angel came and com came close to her and picked her up by the hands and brought her to a place where there was a bonfire. And up of a, upon the bonfire, there was a fish and bread over the coals, over the live coals. And that's what the Lord wants to show you. The Lord is your food. God's your sustenance. The Lord is your God. God is the supplier for her life. She didn't have anything. But now she had all things. And she didn't lack anything because the Lord was present in her house. It was present there in her life. Amen. Let's sing a song.
must be the Lord. Hallelujah. Let us stand up. My beloved, the, the provision for that woman in her house was running out. But the provider was present in the house of that woman. Maybe you entered here tonight saying the provision is running out. There is only a little bit left. But the provider, the Holy Spirit, our Lord and, and God is present to supply to all your needs. It was not the end for that woman. It was not the end for that family. It was a beginning. A new beginning of blessings, of miracles, of experiences with God, of victories with the Lord. My brethren, sometimes in our house, in our family, in our home, in our lives, everything is running out. We only have a little bit left. But the silo of the Lord, it's plentiful. It never runs out. When our resources are extinguished, God enters with the providence, with the help when the, the supply so that we may never lack anything. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah.
Praise the Lord. Because every day, Lord, it blesses our lives. We have not allowed anything to be lacking in our lives. We praise you for your love, for your grace, for your favor, for your mercy. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, we praise the Lord. Blessed be your name. Hallelujah. Holy is your name. Hallelujah. Blessed be your name, Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Blessed be your name, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, God. It's all to be your name, Lord. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Receive, Lord, our, our prayer, our, our gratitude. We're ready offer to you in the holy name of Jesus. In your name we say the wonderful grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the love of God, our good and eternal Father, the sweet and tender consolation of the Holy Spirit be with the people of God now and forevermore. Amen. Amen. The brethren may sit down. The last song that we sang says that we never lacked anything. The Lord provided everything. He gave us victory yesterday, today, and he will give it 
on tomorrow. Bless be the name of the Lord. This is your God. This is our God. That every day has answered to every one of our needs, has gotten up to speak with us, to inhabit our, our lives, to inhabit in our hearts, to remove anguish, pain, and suffering, uh, bitterness, and put more comfort, refreshing, hope, and give us an eternal life in the presence of God. The desire of the Lord is that you who are here tonight, that you may come back many times. If you are here, it is because there is a purpose from God to bless your life. I have services every Tuesday at 8 o'clock, a doctrine service. We have Wednesday a meeting with the women at 8 o'clock. Thursday, we have a prayer meeting at 8 o'clock at the evening. Saturday, Saturday and Sunday, we have service at 7.30 of the night. And also, we have Sunday school on Sundays at 10.30. And everybody's invited to participate if you need uh, clarification regarding of what was preached. So raise your hand so that we may be able to identify you. And the brethren here are going to go and give you to the proper assistance. I would like to remind the brethren from this midnight, it begins the period of prayer. Uh, non-stop, 24 hours for 7 days. But the topics that have already been distributed to the brethren regarding the month of the dedication. Amen. If you desire prayer, just raise your hand.